declare this meeting of the Howell Township Zoning Board to be open, adequate notice having been given pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act in the following manner. First, on March 31st, 2023, a copy of said notice was mailed to the Asbury Park Press and the Star Ledger. Second, on March 31st, 2023, a copy of said notice was hand delivered to the clerk of the Township of Howell. Third, on March 31st, 2023, said notice was posted in the office of the zoning board and on the bulletin board in the Howell Township Municipal Building, 4567 Route 9, Howell Township, New Jersey. In accordance with the Fire Prevention Code and for your safety, please be advised that this facility is designed with two emergency exits, which are on your right and on the front and rear of the meeting room. Furthermore, smoking is not permitted in the municipal building. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Township TV 77. This meeting is a judicial proceeding. Any questions or comments must be limited to the issues of what the board may legally consider in reaching a decision, and the decorum appropriate to judicial hearing must be maintained at all times. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Eileen, can we have a roll call, please? Sure, Mr. Perillo. Here. Mr. Cantor is excused. Mr. Hughes? Here. Mr. Mertens? Here. Mr. Rosco is coming late. Mr. Stanton is excused. Mr. Ryan is excused. Mr. Rubel? Here. And Chairman Saya? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Will everybody please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Andy, can we have a swearing in of the professionals, please? Raise your right hand. You swear to testify and give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you die. I do. I do. Please just take Carl's Keller, TNM Associates. Jennifer Beam, Leanna Savakian. Professionals are sworn, Mr. Thank you, sir. Item 5 on the agenda, approval of minutes, July 24, 2023, regular meeting, eligible voters, Barillo, Cantor, Hughes, Merton, Stanton, Ryan, and Saya. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please, Eileen. Mr. Barillo. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Mertens. Yes. And Chairman Saya. Yes. Minutes approved. Thank you. Eileen, are there any vouchers? No vouchers tonight. Eileen, do we have any correspondence? No correspondence tonight. Very good. Item 8, resolutions, case number BA0824 Alpha, Rod Zarelli. This is a resolution granting use variance and preliminary and final site plan. Eligible voters, Barillo, Cantor, Hughes, Mertens, Orozco, Ryan, and Rebell. Do I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman, before, yes. uh, before you go on this matter, at 3 o'clock today, I received... I previously received, I guess, comments from the applicant's attorney on the former resolution, and that's what the version you have. Um, at 3 o'clock, the applicant's attorney sent me some comments from the applicant himself, um, and our uh, conflicts engineer reviewed them. It's, and I know we don't usually get into the weeds on this, but there's going to be like two sentence changes on paragraphs uh, 6 and 7, minor changes. I would just, I would suggest. Charlie, have you seen the changes? Well, I'm conflicted on this one. Jordan, Jordan from CME did. The end, he was the engineer. Okay. The, and he was fine with it. And he's fine with it? Yep. So I just wanted the board to be aware there'll be. All right, with the amendments. Yes. All right, do we have a motion with amendments? Yes, motion. Barilla. Second. Rebel. Roll call, please. Mr. Barilla. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. And Mr. Rubel? Yes. Resolution approved. Thank you. Okay, up. Applications before the board. Case number BA19-25, Brian Mayer. Extension of time. Andy? Yes. Who do we have here? I'm oh, sorry. Good. I'll put my appearance on with your permission, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, John Jackson. Um, I'm here on behalf of the applicant, uh, the mayors. My offices are in Wall. Taking over uh, this case from Mr. Cohen, who has retired. Yes. Has become That's what a we understand. So. 
Okay, so where are we at with this Thank extension you. of time, sir? Sir, yes, with uh, your permission, I've had a uh, extensive conversation with my clients and Mr. DeFalco, the engineer. This is for 548 Squancom uh, Road. You, you recall that the um, approval was for the addition of uh, 750 square feet to an existing home plus an additional 2,400 square foot billing. Uh, my client's listed as a well driller, but they uh, are really, you know, heating, thermal, thermal heating. Anyway, um, the board gave approval on September 21st, 2020. It expired uh, September 21st, 2022. Uh, because of the D variance, there is a uh, one-year uh, expiration. Mr. DeFalco indicates to me that the uh, reason for the delay was uh, he, because of COVID, he said this uh, original application was actually um, by uh, uh, virtual, um, and uh, it, it just took him time to do these things. He said that he has the freehold soils approval. Uh, he says he's working on the septic permit. That'll be submitted shortly. He says he's uh, working on the county planning board to get them to sign off. He said that the, uh, they, they need an architectural plan update that is uh, virtually complete. That just has to be submitted. And then he has to revise the site plan uh, for um, resolution compliance. Uh, with your permission, Mr. DeFalco thinks that September, a one-year extension, would be insufficient. We respectfully request a two-year extension. Uh, that would take us only out to uh, September 24. First, 2024, it gives us a little over a year uh, to complete these tasks. I know my client's anxious to get going. Uh, it's really just a question of, uh, you know, because of the professionals, uh, et cetera, it just took a long time to do this. All right, one second, Mr. Jackson. John, any issues? No issues. Jen? No, I mean, I would say for the record that the continued use of COVID as an excuse why work isn't getting done is getting a little tired. So, I mean, it's been quite a while since we've been back in action. So I think maybe he should focus and pay attention to this application because this has been hanging out there for a while. And, you know, I think that the board and, and the township is anxious to get this over and done with. As is my client, I understand that. And I've expressed, I, you know, I've uh, impressed that on Mr. DeFalco as well, as has our client. Jo Charlie? Yeah, same comment as Jen. I'm pretty sure at the time what prompted the application, they were operating the business from the site. So that's what prompted it. So I just want to make sure the applicant's making a good fourth effort to get this all together and formalize uh, the improvements on the site. Okay. Andy? Yeah, there's no legal issue with this, Mr. Chairman. If okay. it's, it's within the board's discretion. Okay, sir. Well, you hear from the professionals, you know, uh, your client's got to be responsive, right? And um, you know, the COVID is behind us. Yes, we do have other issues from the virus community that we're all protecting ourselves from. But uh, at the same time, it looks like we're fully back to work. So we are, and I've impressed that on Mr. DeFalco. And like I said, my client is uh, more upset than anyone that this is taking so long. Okay. So, um, as Andy, as far as a two year extension? Yeah, you have the discretion up to three one. We're already, it was memorialized, so it expired November 2022. November 2022. So we're already in uh, uh, August 2023. So this would, in essence, take it out till the fall of next year. November 2024. Well, I think the request was for September. September of 2022. But if we want to make full years, what would that add it up? That would be a two one years? Yeah. Okay. Jen, is that okay? All right. So, pleasure of the board. I'll make a motion to approve the extension, as we all noted. To November 2024? Yes. Okay. We got a motion to extend to 2024. I'll second. We got a second. Eileen, roll call, please. Mr. Barillo. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Mertens. Yes. Mr. Rosco. Yes. Mr. Rubel? Yes. And Chairman Sayan? Yes. Next Chairman is approved. Members of the board, thank you very much for your patience. Mr. DeFalco thanks you, and most importantly, the mayors thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next case. Case number BA22-17. Brian and Cheryl Hewlett. Construct a single-family dwelling with a septic system. 
Description. Application of Brian and Cheryl Hewlett as applicants and owners seeking bulk variance approval to construct a one-story, three-bedroom, single-family dwelling with a basement, septic system, portable well, potable well, and construct a stone driveway on premises known as Block 144, Lot 22, 628, Rear, West Farms Road. Who do we have in front of us? Good evening, good evening, members of the board. My name is George McGill. I'm an attorney. I represent Brian and Cheryl Hewitt in this matter. The uh, property is uh, located uh, approximately 700 uh, feet off of uh, West Farms Road. It's serviced by uh, an easement. It's not on, a, on an improved roadway. So that's why we're here. We need that variance from uh, the uh, Howell Township ordinances. Um, I have uh, tonight Brian Hewitt, he's here, um, Bill Jensen's our engineer, and Mike Milliman is uh, our architect. So uh, they'll go through uh, what we're going to talk about tonight. So uh, without further discussion, I, I would like to call uh, Brian Hewlett uh, to uh, start the testimony. Very well, sir. Andy, are we swearing in? Yes. Raise your right hand. You swear the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you God. I do. Please state your name for the record and spell your last name. Brian Hewlett, H-E-U-L-I-T-T. -T. Witness is sworn, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, do you mind if he sits down? I don't mind. Okay, Mr. thank you. Triangle things are mics on the table. Great. Just sit and talk or you should probably sit too. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Brian, uh, you've been sworn to tell the truth. I'm going to ask you some questions. Uh, you uh, uh, purchased the property in December of 2021? Correct, yes. And why don't you uh, give us some of your history with Howell Township in general? Um, I was uh, born in Howell, lived in Howell. I have a business in Howell on um, Route 9, Meineke Car Care, border of Howell and Lakewood. And uh, we're gonna, we want to move back to Howell. I live in Jackson now, but we're getting out of Jackson and coming back here. And you uh, you uh, purchased the property, and it's uh, landlocked, right? Correct. And it's serviced by uh, an easement across uh, two properties, actually. Correct. The one, the second property is my daughter's house, and we're going to live. Well, if you guys allow us, we'll live behind her. That's the uh, game plan. So she's the one property closer to West Farms. No, there's one in front of her that she wants to buy. Right. right. There's one. In, there's one on West Farms. Correct. Then is, there's your daughter's lot. Correct. Then there's your lot. Correct. Okay. And uh, what do you want to do with the property? Uh, build a house. And uh, you hired uh, Mike Milliman to design that house, right? Correct. And yes. he'll uh, he'll uh, go through that, right? Yes. And uh, you and I discussed the fact that we may have to clean up the uh, easement across your daughter's property, right? Yes. Because I went over the fact that the, the easement that's in place uh, may not have been uh, written uh, as clear as it might be. Correct. And you don't see any problem with getting that, uh, that uh, uh, no. easement with your daughter and son-in-law? No, none whatsoever. Is your son-in-law here tonight? He's on his I don't, way. Huh? He's on his way. He's on his way. Well, he's on his way. Okay. That's all the questions that I have for uh, Mr. Ewing. Okay, so then you have an architect. Yes. Do you have an engineer? Yes. Yes. Bill Jensen. <clears throat> Charlie. Uh, it might be easiest to just start with the engineer. Okay, let's do it. The engineer. Okay. All right, sir. Will you just be sworn in? Put your credentials on the record, please. Where the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God. Yes. Please state your name for the record. Sure, it's William E. Jensen, Jr. Okay, can you spell your last name? J-E-N-S-E-N. -E -E Witnesses sworn, Mr. Chairman. Bill, will you take us through your qualifications, please? Sure. Uh, I received my degree from Clemson University to a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of New Jersey. I've testified before various boards in New Jersey. Um, and you were accepted okay. as a correct expert in engineering. Right. I've testified. We accept your credentials, sir. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Bill, you prepared plans in this, uh, in reference to this uh, application, right? Yes. 
Okay, and you have those with you? Yes. And um, you actually uh, spoke with the uh, Fire Bureau. Correct. And that you amended the first plans that you uh, uh, prepared. Right? Correct. So what, what's the date of this plan? This, this plan, uh, the revision date's uh, 1 eight twenty three. And that's the, that's the only other plan that you prepared. There are no other revision dates, right? Correct. Okay, so why don't you take us through your plans? Sure. Has, um, this, has this been marked as an exhibit, Mr. Miguel? This is... Yeah, we can mark this as A1 if we would. Okay. Thank you. Matt? Uh, we already have an A1 on this, don't we? Eileen? The next exhibit would be A16, but it should be marked if you submitted it. Yes, yeah, well, they did submit uh, it. Okay. Yes, this, this plan was submitted. I, I I didn't mark it tonight, but if it has already been marked, then... It, it, it was revised January 6, 23? Yes. Then it's Exhibit A9. So this A9. Is, so it's A9 for the okay, record. Okay, great. Yes. Uh, you want to mark these two in just in case? Uh, Bill, we have a, a... Is this an aerial? Yeah, we have an aerial. And that was not submitted, right? No, it wasn't. Prepared today. So can we mark that A16, please? A16 mark. <laughs> 16. Yes. Bill, do you have another exhibit that you're going to refer to? Sure. While you guys are doing that, um, a double flag lot? It's not even a flag. It's just landlocked. It's a double landlocked, like, so there's a property on West Farms Road. There's a landlocked piece of property behind it, and this lot is landlocked behind that. Okay, John, any issues with the easement? Not that I'm aware of. Got it. Okay. So, the, Mr. Chair, the applicant's going to have to clarify that. So there's two properties. They indicated one of the properties is owned by their um, son-in-law and daughter, right? So, and they indicated that one has an easement. So is it, is it the, the property on West Farms that there is no easement that exists? <coughs> no, excuse me. There's, a, uh, there's an easement filed in 2017 that, if you read the easement, the, 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 the intent of the easement was to have a 25-foot uh, easement across the uh, property on West Farms, which is 2202. It also was supposed to grant an easement of 50, uh, 50-foot width across 2201, which is the middle property. Our property's 22. It's on the end, 22, 2201, 2202. But when you read that easement, it's not entirely clear because they had made some mistakes in the, in, in, in the drafting of it. So um, we have decided to, to offer uh, to clarify that. And of course, we have no problems with that because we have uh, you know, my client's daughter owning the property. So we're all good with that. Um, I would not. Even if the board accepted that easement, I would not recommend that my client would proceed with that because of the problems that may occur when they go to try to sell the property. So that's what we have. So what I would say, Mr. Chair, is just any approval by the board would need to be conditioned on the applicant providing the documentation for both of those easements, just showing there's lawful access to this landlord parcel. And we have no problem with that. We don't have it right now because that's... Yeah. You know, we have to do a, a map and descriptions. It's more engineering. And that's within the board's purview to grant approval contingent on outside approvals and securing easements across the Jason. Roger projects. that, Charlie. Thank you. Okay, engineer. Just, uh, one other thing, uh, 817 is going to be marked in. It's just a, called a rendering. It's pretty much just our site plan is blown up to show both sites. So that was shown on the screen? Um, more, if you go to the SED plan, more down, it's pretty much this plan except cleaned up. Okay. Show whole power ties into the driveway. So he's got. Some, he's, yeah, I marked it. Okay, I good. Marked it. Uh, okay. Go ahead. So I'll go. I'll go through just quickly the description of the property and what we're proposing. Okay. That's okay. So as was indicated before, it's block 144, lot 22. We're in the ARE2 zone. Uh, the address is actually 628 Rear West Farms Road. Uh, the existing property is 3.06 acres. It's vacant, wooded, uh, with no frontage on West Farms Road. And it's surrounded entirely, if you look at the aerial here, entirely by residential properties. 
Um, the, we talked about the easements. There's existing easements that allow access to pass through lot 2202 and 2201. Um, both lots, 2201 and 2202, have existing dwellings, gravel driveways, and accessory structures. Existing uh, easements provide access to all through for all three lots. So, Bill, let me just hold, that's subject to what I just said. Correct. Okay, and lot 2201, the middle lot, that's that's utilizing the easement across um, the property on West Farms Road right now. Correct. Okay. With the dry, existing driveways. Right. So what our, our client is proposing is to propose a, a three-bedroom, two-car garage on the existing wooded lot, uh, as shown right there on the plan. Uh, the gravel driveway will connect the existing gravel driveway on lot 2202, which continues through 2201 to West Farms Road. Uh, we met, as indicated before, we met with the Fire Bureau on October 18th meeting, uh, and they were acceptance of the proposed uh, driveway and the additional uh, three-foot width on each side of the 12-foot driveway to accommodate any uh, emergency vehicles. So, Bill, that, that, ha that driveway has to be made to certain specifications, correct? Correct. What, what are those specifications? It's, it's to accommodate uh, large vehicle trucks. It's spelled out in the engineer's report. I mean, we're going to make sure it meets those specifications. And that's to handle the weight of the fire, fire trucks, trucks any uh, ambulances, any other emergency vehicles that come through. And that uh, driveway is going to be 18 feet wide, right? Uh, the emergency part is the main drivable uh, route for the homeowner is going to be the 12 foot wide driveway. And that's going to be a delineated, what, what is that? It's just a, there'll be a delineation between the edge of the driveway and the larger stones uh, for the expansion for the emergency vehicles through like stone, some type of stone or decorative material. And that's a requirement of the engineer's report, uh, right? It's a recommendation from the professional engineer, yes. Okay. And we have no problem with that? Not at all. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. Um, we also have uh, the septic's been approved by the Monmouth County Health Department, and depending on um, how the meeting goes tonight, they will apply to get the, the potable well installed for the dwelling as well. Um, as part of this application, we're asking for relief from Section 188-1193 for providing 150 foot uh, of pavement with the new driveway that connects to the existing gravel driveway. Um, so we're the driveway, we're the existing driveway of the, our applicant's daughter's property. Um, the fire department also accepted us not having to pave that 150 feet since the entire road was already gravel, the driveway, sorry. So from that whole section from the, the road all the way up to where our driveway, proposed driveway would start is all gravel, and we would continue that um, as the fire bureau approved. We're also asking for a relief from section 188-51A as the property does not uh, front on West Farms Road. Um, there's a couple comments in the, the letter that we that the professional's letter that we're going to address, uh, the proposed rear deck will remain uncovered. Uh, we will edge delineate the 12 foot wide driveway portion uh, of the access in the access easement. Um, the septic, they have, it's been designed as a four bedroom uh, just for future, any future plans, just to make it easier and cost justified if they want to ever expand in the future. The septic systems. Designed Correct. for four bedrooms. The house is designed for only three bedrooms. There will be no bedrooms in the basement. It's purely for storage. I know that was a comment in the, the letter. Mr. Chairman, we can have the applicant come up and stipulate to that if you need us to do that. If you accept uh, uh, Mr. Jensen's stipulation, um, we'll be bound by it. Charlie? I would say that would be a prudent, uh, given some occurrences of municipal dwellings in the municipality, having additional bedrooms added after the fact. Yes, we'll need that on the record, sir. Okay, thank okay. you. Um, the utilities will be provided through the easements. Uh, there will be extending electric and uh, gas service to the dwelling, as long, along with, you know, phone and cable. 
the property will remain the existing drainage patterns which go from east east to west uh, will remain um, they're also as recommended by the board professionals uh, roof leader dry wells for the roof leader systems will be provided and that'll that'll take care of 100 percent of the runoff from the from the structure for, correct okay so there'll be no added uh, runoff from the structure right and then um, existing trees will only be removed for any driveway expansion in the dwelling. So they're not planning to, uh, you know, clear cut the property at all, just to, to get the dwelling and the driveway in. Um, as I indicated before, we had the Monmouth County Health Department approval on 8 11 22. Uh, free old soils, we have approval from them on 9 15 22. And the Monmouth County Planning Board exemption letter dated 9 6 22. So, Bill, <clears throat> we're not. Just for the record, we're not creating this lot. Correct. We're just trying to develop an existing lot that's existed in Howell Township. And other than not being on a street, do we require any other variances? No, we've, we've located the dwelling and pro uh, proposed the improvements to meet all the requirements in the ARE2 zone. And this may be a stupid question, but is there any way to get frontage for this property? Uh, no, the property is completely surrounded by existing residential dwellings. It's 700 feet or so from West Forms. Correct. Okay. Um, so, from uh, do, do you see that, uh, or, or could you tell the board if there'll be any uh, detriments uh, to the surrounding properties from from an engineering perspective? Um, from an engineering perspective, I don't see any detriment. To, to, Drainage patterns are going to remain the same. There's significant wooded lot areas between, um, from the back of the lot. It's actually lot 2702 that abuts up to the western property line. Just if you're looking at the, the plan to the bottom of the sheet. So there's a wooded property there, and their backyard is uh, also wooded. And the area itself is uh, sufficient to meet the... Uh um, zone requirements. Correct. Do you um, foresee any issues with the uh, emergency vehicles using the uh, easement? Uh, I do not, especially after having the, the meeting with the fire bureau. I don't have any further questions, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Charlie. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. So just to clarify, so they do need the relief, uh, as they noted, for not having frontage on a public right-of-way. The other relief they noted, obviously, was for the residential driveway standards. The first 150 feet of the driveway are required to be paved. Um, that would require them to pave, you know, onto the two properties off of West Farms Road. There is an asphalt apron, you know, five to six feet wide off the road when West Farms Road was paved two years ago. So as far as vehicle track, tracking stone, you, you do have an asphalt apron there. Um, uh, just wanted to talk about the um, driveway with 12 feet versus 18 feet. So I think the original proposal was for 12 feet wide. The fire official said he wanted it to be 18 feet wide to get emergency apparatus in there. The stormwater rules now are a little bit more stringent on impervious coverage and things like that. Uh, so the applicant demarcated a 12 foot width that's required per the ordinance and then three foot over on both sides just for emergency access purposes. Uh, to stay under the threshold of emergent, uh, major development. I just uh, think it would be prudent to add a condition that if the applicant has ever has any intent to pave it, it should just be the inner 12-foot width, so we stay under those thresholds. Um, I really don't see any issue with the application as far as an engineering perspective. I think they've done their due diligence at this point. Stormwater, you're, you're comfortable with stormwater? Yeah, I would just say the dry wells just <clears throat> need to be sized for the water quality storm for the roof runoff. Is that acceptable, Mr. Jensen? Yes. And like I said, it's under the threshold of a major development, so there's no stormwater management basins and, and things of that nature. So. Okay, good. Jen, I'm going to ask you. Uh, I mean, uh, ideally, we would not love to see landlocked properties, right? That's not the ideal, which is why we have a uh, requirement here in town that says development shall be on an improved street. This lot has been there for, I can't even tell you how long this condition while it's not ideal, it's not unusual, as you all know, we have many of these circumstances throughout the township that have been in existence for years. I think that given uh, the applicant's 
uh, willingness to clean up the easement language and to extend it through the existing driveway. You know, I take no exception to the relief being requested. It is a building lot. It's a legal building lot in the, in the town and has existed in this condition for a while. So, you know, I mean, they're not overdeveloping the site. It's a, a modest size home. Um, they're, they've committed to only clearing what's absolutely necessary. And I agree with Charlie, you know, they've put, they've um, addressed the, the fire department's concerns as well as putting in drywalls to, ad uh, to address any additional runoff. So I take no exception should the board act favorably on the application. Thank you, John. Hey, John. Yes, sir. You know, you got a street. How are we going to maintain it? Driveway. Driveway. Uh, actually, I was, I was actually going to ask if there was any kind of consideration given to a uh, garbage pickup uh, because that's pretty, pretty far in uh, if there's some kind of an act. I mean, I know it's going to be gravel. Uh, is there going to be some kind of a turnaround, or uh, is the garbage going to be dragged out all the way out to uh, West Farms Road? I think they're discussing. We're going to have to get that. Yes, thanks, John. The the applicant indicated that we pulling the the trash and recyclables to the end of the street or West Farms Road. To the end of the street, okay. The end of the driveway, sorry. The end of the driveway. And then, Mr. Chair, just to remind the applicant, it's a private driveway, right? And there's an easement through two separate properties. It's between them and their adjacent property owners to, uh, you know, work out a maintenance plan as far as snow plowing, regrading the stone, and all those things of that nature. And it should be covered in any easement documentation. In the easement documentation, I would like to see that. Yes. Okay. Okay. I actually have a uh, question. Go ahead, board sure. members. Yep. Um, <coughs> this might be kind of a legal thing. It may be already covered, but I'm just curious. When you have this, the uh, property fronting the street and an easement with the daughter's property in place, and now you're going to add a third property in the back, does, from a legal standpoint, does the front property have to approve of or sign off on that? Additional traffic on their property. I, I can answer that. The, uh, the answer would be no, because the, the easement that I have right now anticipated that. Okay. It, they just didn't get the job done sufficiently. But, yeah, there, there would be no er overburdening of the easement. It anticipates access to 22. Okay. Are Thank there you. any further lots behind this particular lot? No. Um, Look at the herbs. No. no. They're on Charles Street, uh, okay, Mr. Saya. So the answer would be no. Got it. And, and then more to the point, there, even if there were, there wouldn't there wouldn't be a, an easement in place because this only goes to 22. It doesn't go through 22. Okay. So they would have to you know, find their own access. But I think everybody... That clarifies it, yeah, yes. Yeah, is that good? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, any, other, any other questions, board members? Yeah, members? I'm just curious, maybe Mr. Jansen or Charlie can answer this question. Um, right where the driveway bends, I'm looking at from 30 feet here, I'm just wondering what that oval thing is right there. It's like an oval oh. area, which, is that like the dry well? No, so that, th yeah, so this, this plan you're looking at right now is the free old soil plan. Um, so that's the stockpile. Okay. It, it's, it's for that specific permit. Okay, that's yeah, all I have. So that, that's what, sorry. Thank you. Okay, well, Mr. McGill, um, unless board members, do you have any questions? Mike? Um, no. Good. Jose? No. Sir? Mr. Chairman, I think he just wanted to have on the record the representation that there's no bedroom in the in the basement. Correct, and then we can move on to the architect. Oh, we're going to do the architect. Okay. Yeah, we want to see that real quick. All right. No. I'll Thank try you, to Mr. Read the tea leaves on that it's one. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jensen. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Brian, could you come up? Just ask you. I, I'm sorry. I, I I meant to ask you this, these two questions. The uh, engineering report. Uh, asked if you have any intention of putting a bedroom in the basement. No. 
Um, no. And you have a back deck, and it, uh, the, the report asks if you have any intention to cover it, because that would increase your coverage and put yeah. you into the... No. So you're not going to cover the back deck? No. Okay. And, and no, the, no fourth bedroom. And no fourth bedroom. No. But you're putting in a septic for a fourth bedroom. Whatever they have. I'm not going with four bedrooms, no. The, the Board of Health approval is in the event that additional be, an additional bedroom is included in the in the property. Then he's going to have to it, come back in front of the board? It doesn't, no. No, okay. Mm -hmm. But he, he would have to file the proper paperwork and... He got a permit from the Board of Health. The septic system is designed for a for bigger house than he's proposing. Yeah, and I think oh. the chairman was saying if he wanted to add, add a fourth bedroom, he'd have to come back. No, he doesn't have to come back. Because the, he, as long as he complies with all the bulk standards, it's no different than pulling a permit for any single family house. Roger. Okay, you're good. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you. Can I uh, call Mike Milliman, please? Andy, let's get him sworn. And uh, you swear the testimony I'll give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and I hope you got it. I do. Please state your name for the record, spell your last. Michael Milliman, M I L L E M A N N. <laughs> Mr. Milliman, will you uh, please. Uh, Take us through your qualifications. Uh, sure. Graduated uh, NJIT up in Newark in 92. Uh, I've been licensed in the state of New Jersey since 1999. I've appeared before many boards in Ocean and Monmouth counties. We'll accept your credentials, sir. Thank you. Mr. Milliman, you prepared the architectural plans in this matter, right? Uh, yes, I did. And we did submit the architectural plans to the board, um, and you didn't change those since we submitted, right? No, I have not. But you do have a rendering? Yes. And um, perhaps uh, we could mark the rendering as, is it 18? Yes. A18? Yes. And the architectural plans are A18. Yes. And what do we have up here? These look like A8. It's just the elevation. Yeah, okay. The plane. He's got a colorized rendering 3D up there. 19? Is it 18? 18. 18? 18. 18. If need be, I can move this a little closer. Can you see you want it? a little closer? I can see it. Okay. Everybody can see it? Yep. Okay. That's nice. Like to see. Just quickly, I'll just go through the, uh, the main points of the elevation. We, can you talk from the, the microphone? Yeah, So you've seen the floor plans. The uh, it's a, a single-family ranch, um, and again, the uh, the the plan is uh, divided up just simply into uh, three major components. There's two bedrooms on the left side of the plan, um, public spaces, the uh, kitchen and great room. There's a small office at the front. Um, that's the public area, and then the um, uh, primary suite and the two-car garage are on the right side of the plan. So simply, that's, uh, those are the major components. There's a stair down to the basement. Uh, there's a, um, as you can see from the illustration, we have a nice uh, large uh, porch in the front. And then there's the uncovered uh, porch in the back to view over the, uh, the rest of the site. Great. Um, um, do we have an idea of how, how much clearing is going to be done in order to I understand that it's not a major, uh, just an idea. Is there a woodlands management on this one? So their limited disturbance on the plan is 0.75 acres, but that also includes for clearing of the easement on the uh, middle property. And I'll just, I believe uh, our ordinance has like a homestead exemption, you know, where single family residential is allowed to clear up to a certain amount, so it wouldn't fall under the threshold of Roger. needing a woodlands management plan. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Questions from the board? Go ahead. No, I think it looks great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's only a comment. All right. Maybe Nick? make that fourth bedroom for me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I did have a question before. Go ahead. We like the engineer stuff, like. When does something turn that would have to be a road versus an easement? Like, we're going through three properties here, right? There's three houses. Uh, I, I, that was just a curious question. Uh, 
So uh, that's why they're here seeking relief, right? Um, it's not on a public right away. This isn't something atypical. We've seen similar applications like this. Our ordinance does allow when residential driveways are of a certain distance, they have to comply with certain standards. Um, I think it's 188-19 is the ordinance, 119 is the section. Uh, over 150 feet, the first 150 feet are supposed to be paved and then the balance thereof can be of material support fire apparatus. You heard Mr. Jensen put testimony on the record that they met with a fire official and did some due diligence. Like I said, I think the original uh, proposal was only a 12 foot wide driveway and they widened it up to 18 feet for emergency purposes. Um, you know, if the board were so inclined to require them to pay the first 150 feet, you know, it would be a little challenging because you have two properties that the applicant doesn't own um, that they would have to pave on that. Anytime you're putting in pavement over gravel, you're increasing the impervious cover. You know, some of that water is not going to then bleed through the gravel, creating more runoff. So, you know, it's one of the two difference of it. If this was, you know, a landlocked parcel off of a paper right away, then it might be a different instance where they'd have to extend the roadway to that property. Um, being that it's landlocked and it doesn't actually have any technical frontage, this isn't atypical from applicants of this nature. I don't think there's any hard and fast rule as to like, if it hits this threshold, it becomes a road versus a private easement. I think if there was, I think what Charlie was referring to is that if there's paper streets shown on a tax map but are not improved, that might be a different scenario where it's actually a road. But here, it's private property and it's the easement language is going to be specific to allow access. It's not, a, you know, you're not encouraging the public to traverse this to get back. It doesn't really go anywhere. It goes to the two houses in the back. So there's no, like, hard and fast, if this, then it's a road. It's just taken on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. This is definitely not a road. This is a private easement. It's like a driveway, like a shared driveway arrangement. And so we're not having them do that 150 feet of pavement. That's we're what they've asked for, yes. That's what they asked for them and not to have done. Correct. And, and I would support the request just because, as Charlie had said, the 150 feet is, traverses two properties that are not the applicants. So you're imposing coverage and runoff on properties that right now have been operating. I mean, the two back-to-back -back have been operating like that for some time. Um, and I think by cleaning up the easement language and the fire department, as well as Charlie's office, has looked at it and feels that it's not really necessary in this instance, given the magnitude of what is off of this driveway. We leave it pristine, yes. And in the future, when houses are sold in these situations, if they, who's ever buying it just has to take the easement as is? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions from board members? Professionals were good. Then we're going to open it to public. Can I have a motion open? Motion. Nicholas? Second. Rich? Eileen, we're open. All in favor? Aye. 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 The meeting will now be open to the public. Okay, if there's anyone from the public that has any questions or comments. Not seeing any. Can I have a motion to close? Motion to close. Use? Second. Rubel? All in favor? Aye. 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 Eileen, we're closed. Meeting is now closed to public. Okay. Mr. McGill? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just briefly, I, I think this matter uh, really hinges upon satisfying the safety requirements of the easement. And we did meet with the Fire Bureau, and we have designed this so that those trucks can get back there. So I think the access is adequate. Otherwise, the lot is buildable, and the proposal doesn't require any other variances. So I think, uh, given those circumstances, that the board would be justified in granting the relief requested. Thank you, Mr. McGill. What's the pleasure of the board? Well, Mr. Chair, uh, let's say taking into account cleaning up that easement language, as Mr. McGill knows, has to be done and uh, comes to the satisfaction uh, of, of the uh, professionals. I'd like to make a motion to approve. We got a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. We got a second, Mr. Orozco. Eileen, Rose call, please. Mr. Barillo. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Yes. Mr. Roscoe. Yes. Mr. Rubel. Yes. And Chairman Sayah. Yes. Mr. Thank McGill, you very much. Mr. Hewlett, best luck. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
no, I'll. Can you send them to me tomorrow? That's fine. It's okay, a, I'll email uh, Mr. You know, Jensen. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those, those totos have big wheels. You just drag. <laughs> It's in the easement. It's the language has got to be in the easement. It's got to be a clean. Yeah. They have to work it out in the easement, right? That's Thank what Charlie was saying. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah. Board, do you want to continue on? Yes. All right, let's yeah. do it. Can you email it to me tomorrow? Thank you. Okay, up before the board. Application case number BA 18-02 SP, Robert and Dolores Kowalski, minor site plan. Application of Robert and Dolores Kowalski as applicants and owners of 26 McGill Road, Lot 229, Lot 9, seeking minor site plan approval to continue to use the property as a residence and a roofing business with storage and materials. The applicant previously obtained bifabricated use relief from the Zoning Board in 2019. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Sir. For the record, John Jackson, again, on behalf of the Kowalski family, uh, 26 McGill Road, as you recited, this received use variance approval. Uh, we're here this evening to uh, get the uh, required site plan. Since they were basically all existing structures, there uh, really was, there's not a lot to uh, do regarding the site plan. Um, uh, your, your, excuse me, your planner and your engineer have similar comments about a gravel roadway, about a light, about uh, bamboo uh, that has to be taken down, about an easement. Uh, so with your permission, in order to expedite things, I'd like to have our engineer and planner sworn, and he will just go right to the letters with your permission. All right, let's do it, please. You swear the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, I do. Please state your name for the record and spell your lot. Robert Siv, S-I-V is in Victor E. I'm a licensed professional engineer and professional planner in the state of New Jersey. I have over 28 years experience. I'm a graduate of New Jersey Institute of Technology. I testified before this board earlier this year and numerous times in the past. This is the first time... I think I've been live in front of this board since 2020, is it? We'll accept your credentials, but sir, you're testifying as an engineer right now. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Siv, with the chairman's per you've accepted him with the chairman's permission. Can we just get right to the heart of the matter? Uh, just briefly tell us what zone we're in, what's there, what approval the board gave, why we're here tonight, and the three or four items uh, that Mr. Cunliffe and, and Ms. Beam have uh, asked us to address. Sure, absolutely. The site is identified as Block 229, Tax Slot 6, more commonly known as 26 McGill Road, and is located within the ARE3 zone, which has an area of approximately 6.9 acres. The property is currently developed with a one-story single-family dwelling within the front portion of this property, two commercial buildings within the center portion of the property, and freshwater wetlands within the rear of the property. The site is accessed via a two-way circulation driveway from McGill Road near the Wesley property line, and circulates past the existing dwelling to the rear of the commercial buildings. Um, as the chairman indicated, we were before the board in 2019. We received use variance approval to continue to use that front dwelling as a residential dwelling and to continue to operate the roofing business out of the rear two commercial buildings. It was bifurcated, so we got the use variance approval, and now we're here for the site plan approval that's related to that use variance. I can tell you there was very thorough discussion at the use variance time about the site elements. And we'll go through Mr. Cunliffe's and Ms. Beam's letters, but I can tell you the applicant has pretty much installed all of those items that were discussed at the use variance between then and now. So most of the site improvements are in place at this point. Just very briefly, the Monmouth County uh, Planning Board, they signed off, right? Board of Health signed off. Uh, we have, uh, we'll get to Mr. Cunliffe and Ms. Beam's letter in a minute. Environmental Commission uh, signed off. And uh, we'll, we'll address the, the foresters, uh, 
report when you address the bamboo. So if you don't mind, can you just go right to the, I don't know if you want me to put up uh, Mr. Cunliffe's letter or uh, Ms. Beam's letter. Would be we'll start with uh, Charlie's letter, if that works. It's the June 13th, 2023 letter. And I believe we would jump right to page four. And Charlie, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. I think it's page four, the general items of discussion. Uh, and item seven, we'll start with is 7A. And it indicates that uh, the board recommended an easement along that westerly property line that has similar language as a farmland buffer easement. And we have shown that on the plan and we agree to do that. And that easement will be filed as part of any site plan approval. And the uh, Rob, before you go on from that, yeah. like one of the items on that condition also was to, to enhance that farmland buffer. And we're, based upon the plans, it doesn't appear that that has been done. So has it been done? And if it hasn't, when is it going to be done? That's a, that's a fair point. And there was more landscaping shown as part of the original use variance plan. And then what happened was we actually, and it wasn't me actually, it was my partner Mike when he was doing this, uh, met with Sherry, the applicant, and himself at the site. It was roughly 2021. There was a lot of vegetation in that buffer area already. Sherry agreed to the 12 trees that are shown on the site plan today. Those trees are actually planted. They're right planted. There on the picture, is that it? Correct. They were planted in April of last year, and that's the agreement that was reached is our plan that's there today. Okay. So I would just submit, Mr. Chair, that, that um, you know, at the end, if the board acts in the affirmative on the site plan, that we just get a sign off on all of this. I know Sherry wrote a letter, but just get a sign off on all of this that it was done to her satisfaction, just so that we can have it in the in the file. So you know, if John has to go out in the field. At least he knows Sherry's on board with what has been done. We agree to that. It's no problem. Got it. Thank you. For so that uh, yeah, condition seven B, I think Jen and B, B, so that's letter. Uh, yes, condition J, the formula and buffer. Okay. Yep. So perfect. So item C is that there's a garage door at the rear bay area. We have a note on the plan that says that door should be closed during any work being done inside the building. They want the note to say closed at all times, I guess, except for when vehicles are entering and exiting that door. So obviously, we will, we will add that note or adjust that note. Thank you. Um, D talks about the bamboo that is on the site. Again, at the meeting we had with Sherry, she observed the bamboo. It's confined to a certain location on the property, and she's fine leaving it where it is in lieu of trying to battling it. It seems to have been contained naturally, and it's working well as it is today. Okay. I would Part just of before, Sherry's letter, before, we'll get yes. to I, I will say Shari did submit a letter and did indicate that it seems contained. It hasn't migrated. But again, similar to the prior condition with the farm buffer, just to have her give a once and for all sign off so that you have it. And we know that the site plan is cons is consistent with the use variance conditions. Okay. Not a problem. And then the last item is letter E, and it indicates that there's a light at the rear of the existing garage, which shall be eliminated. There may have been a little bit of confusion from the applicant. He thought at the use variance hearing that light was supposed to be lowered, which he did, and then we made the light readings, which are shown on our plan. Um, he's willing to eliminate the light if that's what was agreed to, and the board wants us to eliminate that light. The only thing um, we'd ask latitude is to put like a, a house light on there, comparable somebody would have at their back door, just so when you go in and out of that door, you don't trip. You gotta have door. Charlie. Charlie, you gotta have low level light, right? Yeah, no, I think for security purposes is uh, you know adequate, you know, and then some type. I mean, of like I said, we did lower the light, and I know this. There's a lot of history to this, and the neighbor next door had an issue with that light. We actually met with that neighbor, which got to the lower height that we're at today. I know he's not here. It's just take it for what I've told you, but. Um, the light levels that are shown on the plan today are based on that light at its current okay. height. That what I would show? say is if they can provide documentation from the neighboring property owner that they were acceptable with the he, he height doesn't being live lower. There he doesn't? Okay. <laughs> no, he's gone. I would just say take the light down and then uh, secure the house light. Yep. Yeah, that's okay. fine. That's, that's what I'll call it, but the type yeah. of, you know, porch light. A regular residential. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That Great. works. Okay. All right, um, there was a question about the trailers, item eight, and uh, my client has um, installed the gravel there. Um, we have pictures of it. Um, he's brought in tons and tons of gravel. There's a picture of it. I can provide this and mark this. And I believe that area has to be delineated, and we can do that to make sure that uh, when code enforcement goes out there, the trailers are supposed to be on the parking pad. So uh, you can mark that with some kind of... Uh, I think at, at this point the gravel shows where it's supposed to, you know, where they're supposed to park. Um, 
that's satisfactory. He's done that, and it's in that general location where it's shown on that aerial where you can see the rows of, it's hard to tell, but there are trailers and whatnot behind the commercial buildings. And Rob, to clarify, that's not the circulation drive immediately behind the building. That's a separate gravel pad, right? Correct. That's where okay. you can see in that aerial image the trailers and storage of vehicles. I have Google Earth right there. That's the current Google Earth. And that's where that stone is located. It's supposed to be located. So the next item uh, on the letter would be 613. The light, uh, the, t the storage area. I think that takes us through Mr. Conlow's letter, unless there's something I missed. There was an issue about a gravel driveway um, that's basically been abandoned and that's uh, turning back into grass and grown over. We're not excavating it or digging it over, but there was a uh, gravel drive. You can see it in the uh, Google aerial along the fence here, but that, that's a you know, currently being reclaimed and will not be used. And you could see the, the you could actually see the trees I just put up there planted along here. So they planted the trees in that area, they just won't use it, and it's just going to get taken back over by nature. Uh, anything else? That takes us through the June 13th, 2023 letter from Charlie. Jen? Jen My letter is pretty much the same. The only question that I have is when you're talking about that 100 by 20 storage area in the rear. Um, we, we would just ask, and I think Charlie's letter also asked for a detail of that area because it's not really delineated on your plans. Absolutely. There's a driveway detail for the stone widening, and I'll just update the title of that to include that pad area. Okay. And, and just to give the board context, the reason that why that was required is there is wetland along the rear of the property. You know, previously there was storage trailers and vehicles being parked within that wetlands buffer. They were required to remove all that. There was also some structures and trailers along the west property line that they were required to remove because of some complaints with the neighbors. That's an active, it was an active farm property at the time. So that's why that 20 by 100 was required to consolidate all these things into one single location. And then as they indicated previously, the circulation went 360 degrees around those two rear structures. They were required to remove the western portion of that. Uh, along the west side of the structure, which they indicated they have, and that's started to revegetate. So, and like I said, these were all worked out with the adjoining property owner as part of the use variance approval. So, I think that's all that we have from an engineering and planning perspective. What is the um, circulation driveway? What kind of material is that? Blue stone or is that asphalt? So the first, uh, I'm going to call it about 100 feet from McGill Road into the site is paved. Okay. And then the rest of it is more like a DGA type of material, stone okay. DGA. And back where the trailers are, you're going to be putting the uh, blue stones? Stone, correct. Okay. Yeah, see in the, that, uh, but is there going to be a separation between them, or are they going to come right up to the circulation drive? There's a slight separation. I would think over time it'll kind of okay. up, butt up against it. Um, it's shown right now there's about anywhere from a two to five foot separation. And you can kind of see it in the aerial. Uh, there's a little separation between that actual gravel. But well, and just to refresh for the board, so this was a use that had been operating on the site since the early 90s. The gravel driveways had been in existence for some time. The fire officials, part of the use variance approval, just asked them to widen it to make it to the 18 or 20 foot that he required for emergency access purposes. So. But they've been operating a roofing business there since the early 90s, so there's been some type of vehicle driving on that routinely uh, for some time. So. Okay. Board members, any questions? No, nope. I'm good. John, you good? Just curious, uh, the single-family residence is still on the property, correct? Correct. And that's being occupied by? I believe it's a tenant. Okay, so uh, in checking my records, uh, I don't see a current landlord registration or a rental CO for the tenants that are in there. So, so they'll have to comply with that. Clients are here, they're uh, not nodding their heads up and down, they've heard you. I don't know if they have it or go get it, but uh, we have Yeah. <coughs> so just to clarify, do you have one or you're going to apply for one? You have one? Okay, so landlord registration is a yearly 
uh, registration, which is due January of every year. And um, I'll just double check uh, to make sure. Uh, I mean, the blocking lot hasn't changed. So I, the last one I saw, of same tenant since 2019. Okay, so then you'll just have to update your landlord registration. I could go over the, uh, with you uh, what's required for that. Okay. Thank you, John. Okay, Mr. Jackson. When I walked in, Ms. Beam uh, pulled me aside and admonished me to be efficient and quick, and I've done my best. Okay. <laughs> um, do I need to open this up to public, Andy? Yes. Okay. Um, motion to open the public. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We got a, all in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting will now be open to the public. Okay. Not seeing anyone from the public coming forward. Motion to close. Motion to close. Merton. Second. Second. Rebel. All in favor? Aye. 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 The meeting will now close to the public. Okay, Mr. Jackson. Um, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, the, the, the heavy lift was done when the use variance was granted. It's just a question of abiding by those conditions. I, I think we've done so, and um, we're hopeful that the board will view it that way and approve our site plan. Thank you. It's the pleasure of the board. Mr. Chair, uh, Looking at the, at this uh, this whole setup, that everything looks good. I was actually here for the first one. Uh, just having the sign-offs on the plantings and bamboo from Shari uh, has agreed upon, and that change of the residential light. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll, okay. Mr. Borello. We got a motion to approve, and we got a second. Eileen, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Borello. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Martin. Yes. Mr. Roscoe. Yes. Mr. Rubel. Yes. And Chairman Sands. Yes. Applications approved. On behalf of the Kowalskis, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, Eileen, when's the next meeting? August 28th. August 28th. Okay. If there's no further business, then can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. We got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Eileen, we are adjourned. <laughs>